and Boom Esports now underway. Uh, we did see a quick shift from uh, from FBZ as well. He he did actually go back Prepare for the gluttony, for oh, so he yes. does he does end up going back for the uh, for the two devour charges. We also had a switch up here from Jabs. He initially had the horsepower facet, but literally in the last half a second, he changes to Counter Strike. So there you go. I was watching very carefully. Hmm. Very interesting. I do I do feel like with the nerfs of horsepower, Counter Strike is actually preferable. Nowadays, um, you don't really mind wasting the money into the boots anyhow. You get a little bit more damage with Double Edge, a little bit more laning presence, and more nuke ability as the game scales on. I'm keen on seeing if this does pay off here for good old jabs. Again, a very interesting draft overall. Um, keen, on, keen on seeing just how well TA2000 does. This is one of his special heroes, mind you. I do believe this is something that you and I have actually watched a couple of times as a pocket pick last time around for TA2000. So I am very curious as to how much he gets out of that lane with a pack rat. And the extra, the neutral item being used by everyone can be quite annoying if you get the right neutral. So let's see if you get some luck in that, in that respect as well here for TA2000. Absolutely. No level one team the fight looking like it's uh, maybe down at the bottom rune spot, but no. Uh, boom, we'll be able to take it. It'll be a two for two trade. Neither side really wants to get too dirty too early. And of course, we can have a look at the mid lane. I mean, you're going to have Mac against Arbed. It's going to be the Prophet versus the Pangolier. And this is not going to be very fun for Mac. I mean, he's up against this great Atreant. He's up against a range hero and the Prophet. It's not the, the funnest lane here for the Pango. And it certainly isn't. You do manage to avoid the shortcomings of the... Opening with NP into the Doom, and you're not going to have to worry about the Ironwood Tree being melted. Mac is fairly durable, as long as he can get the Shield Crash spam going, so it shouldn't be too rough at the very least, facing up against this Ironwood Tree. But Abed is going to have superior lane control overall. Um, it's going to be maybe by level 2, level 3, Mac can start to apply a little bit more pressure. It feels like this isn't a bad lane to actually get a value point and lucky shot. Just try to disarm the Tree when you're chasing in, but... It does remove a little bit of your nuking potential in that lane as well. It does. With that top lane, you're going to see TA2000 and carry against Tims and FBZ. This should be a bit of a quiet lane as well. I mean, FBZ, he can start to get aggressive later on once you hit maybe the level 2, level 3 mark. Does actually end up getting the Chain Lightning from the Harpy Stormcrafter. So, wants to have that kind of range magic damage to be able to secure range creeps himself. It's also a very low mana cost. So, FBZ can be a little bit annoying with this spell. He can be. And they are both sides getting their pulls a little bit better here on the Radiant side for Boom, of course. Going to be able to clear out the Creep Wave. It's really important to try to slow down the Meepo before he hits his uh, level 3. As with the extra Meepo the EXP gain, it's going to be a little bit wild. Okay, we're going to be uh, a little bit careful. They do have plenty of burst damage here between FBZ and Tim's. But bottom lane is where First Blood has been drawn. DJ going down to Jabs. Looks like Q did set up with the disruption, so it was a nice easy kill for Japs to secure. Uh, and of course this... Oh, in fact, Kauri goes down our top lane. So Tim's able to secure a kill for his side. What I was trying to say though, John, this bottom lane for Aurora, they do have that classic Shadow Demon Centaur combination. Just pretty hard to avoid. And it is. It's been a while since we've seen this actual dual lane come out, but... Very straightforward, like you mentioned. You've got the setup, you've got great nuking damage again. With Counter-Strike on for jabs, there is a lot of burst potential even from the laning phase with the extra damage you have. And of course, with Q playing something like the Shadow Demon, great stacking potential as well. This is something that we know Aurora loves. Boom weren't able to try to get a smoke out to block camps early. So if Q has some room, once jabs, say, hits level 3, level 4, if no kill opportunity presents itself, you can always just stack up like a maniac, and everyone on Aurora is going to be very happy about that. Especially if Boom do not manage to check that. Still, in terms of CS at the very least, Ghost is having a swell enough time. The Alchemist not really the focus of their attention here on Aurora. At the very least, uh, DJ is buying some good spacing, getting Jab's attention away. And as long as Ghost is farming, I think you're still relatively happy here down bot. Oh, absolutely. Very important for Ghost to, to get a good start on this Alchemist because uh, things can get rather rather terrible rather quickly against the, the draft of Aurora. You do, uh, you do want to hit that tempo in the mid game here with this Alchemist as best as humanly possible. And, oh, 
we shall see if he can get that early radiance build up to, to really start to escalate as they are jumping in on Ghost now. Ghost will channel up the stun. They are going to move into Q, trying for a kill. Ghost, he'll get the stun off in time. Q in big trouble. Still trying to fight with the Shadow Poison stacks, but is going to go down. Jabs now with the chase, looking for a double edge onto Ghost, but is not going to find it. In fact, Ghost, thinking about throwing another stun out onto Jabs. Does get it out, but they're not going to die with the tier 1 tower. Now, already a nice kill to hand over onto Ghost. More than happy in the Elk, of course, to just clean up that way. Going to be accelerating into his phase, Boots and Soul Ring, to keep sustaining that farm and the spell spam. You do have to be a little bit cautious about your positioning in Q. Very smart shards out from DJ to just cut off jabs on his re-engage, looking for a hoof stomp, double edge. Bit of aggression up yes. top here, though. Tim's looking to die. He does at least get the Lotus off in time, but the chase is on. TA2000 looking for an ensnare, but does not connect. Rather, an Earthbind does not connect, and or well, the Wild Wing Ripper, it does lose vision. So Tim's does barely survive thanks to the healing Lotus he picked up earlier. Meanwhile, FBZ now going to cop a bit of damage on his way out. And this is the stage now where the Ench gets annoying, annoying to play against because you've got level 2 enchant and Sadly for FBZ, he did not have Devourer off cooldown. Still on cooldown for a little bit longer here as well, already using two of his charges. You do still get to play the lane, but now TA2000 does hit level 4 with a 2 meter goes up. Yeah, they're going to move in. Tim's in pretty big danger. Hoops coming out, and Tim's is gone. He does deny carry the uh, the D ward on that large camp, so they aren't going to be able to pull the lane back quite as, uh, as efficiently as they would have liked to, but it will still cost the life of Tim's. And does. Nice little pickup now for the Meepo to get as the level 4 comes in. A little bit more EXP coming in here for TA2000. And this is the point where it can get a little bit annoying to play into the Ench Meepo. As long as you've got a good creep up for Kauri, you'll always have some kill potential coming out into this lane, especially onto Tim's. He doesn't have any way to really bail out from that one once the Bushwhack is expended. A very even laning start so far early on here. A good chase down from Tim's just to stop Kauri, but he has already managed to get himself a nice tomato creep. And Tim's... Trouble again, Tim's. This time we'll drop. Is Arbit able to secure the kill with the Wrath of Nature now on the Prophet? So first kill for Arbit here in this game one. Uh, slowly Aurora starting to heat up. Third kill of the game now for their side of things. Just like the side of Boom, they're going to try and infiltrate the die triangle. Stacks have been made, and they will be able to scout all this out. So Mac trying to trying to get those down as top lane. TP's coming in. FBZ's been jumping a nice drinking buddies from DJ. Going to create the space, and now TA2000. He's gone too far. He'll try to find a way out, but this Meepo's out of mana. He can't poof out of there. He's just trapped, and he's gone. FBZ will take the kill with the Chain Lightning. Very quick rotations here from Boom. And it is great read from that deep dive coming out from TA2000. Good punishment out from Boom. And again, seeing the effect of drinking buddies, that repositional play, just can make it quite annoying when you are committing that hard. Abed does manage to get the space to clear out mid. A very nice solo push from himself with the Ironwood Treants, of course. And that is a cause of concern now for the side of Boom. They don't have a nice TP point to set up your smokes to rush into the triangle a little bit faster. Still no one really checking the triangle as well. I do believe we had DJ walk up, so they are aware of the stacks. But it doesn't look like they're going to be comfy in trying to clearing out some ancient stacks here. At least not just yet. Still, top tower is tree to tree. Attack. You are Radiant getting Austin. fairly free farm on Ghost. Hasn't died, hasn't really been contested too hard here Radiant's by Jabs and Q. And is already starting to play in that Radiant jungle. And I like this movement from Boom. They're all just scouting TA2000 again. They are. They found one Meepo. Snowball's going to be out onto TA2000. He's got Poop up in a few seconds, but they'll just pop Stampede instead. The jab's just allowing TA2000 an escape route out of that scenario. Mind you, I don't think they would have gotten the kill anyway, to be fair, because it was just DJ and Tim's. And speaking of the two, they are going to rotate back down towards the bottom lane now through the Twin Gates. But it seems as though Aurora are very well aware that they're coming. Pull back, play it safe. They, know, they don't see anyone pushing up top anymore. So they know the gate usage was there. They could set up for their own play here. We have our two supports down, but Q will walk away. Only Kauri coming now with his Warpine Raider. Still trying to kill off Ghost at this point with the Chemical Rage at the ready. Not going to be the easiest thing in the world. 
And they are doing a great job on Boom just holding onto their tier 1 as well. The siege up top is still going relatively slow. They'll get it done eventually. Ghost starting to work towards that Radiance we just spoke about. In fact, he's going to join his team at that top tier 1 tower. So they're kind of hoping somebody comes to defend here from Aurora, but... Of course, Aurora, they are going to just sit back and let the tier 1 go down. But they can always just trade tier 1, so it's no real problem here. Ghost, again, back towards the, the, the Radiance farm that he's looking for. TA2000 going for the Diffusal Blade build-up. Ghost, I mean, at least for now, like, for Boom's sake. Again, the Alchemist farm is going to be very, very relevant this game. Like, it's, it's so important Ghost hits all the timings he needs to. This Meepo is going to get out of control at some stage, and of course, you've still got Arbid to worry about on the Prophet to boot. Uh, but for now, again, boom, they're, they're making the space happen. At the art. And the one thing hurting for Boom is that mid tier one difference. Just securing, anchoring, really, the triangle of Horror a little bit better and making movements into the middle part of the top jungle a little bit harder to do from the mid lane. Still, for Boom's part. Uh, their own triangle is secured. They haven't been able to stack up as much in comparison to Aurora, but they will build some Ancients up now. Aurora still working into some good timings. Maelstrom for Abed not too far off. That Diffusal, only the recipe lacking now on TA2000 as well. And you've got Jabs going straight up for the Auras, opting for a Crimson Guard first here to block off a lot of the physical being pumped out by Mac and potentially by Ghost later on. That is one concern here for Boom. If they don't manage to get the jump they'd want, if the saves are at the back, like say Q's around, what is disruption, Stampede comes off afterwards, the the kill isn't going to be coming out for Boom. They need to go for a quick burst play somehow once, the, once they are ready to start hunting a little bit more aggressively. Their ward should be able to spot TA2000. They should know the Meepo is again hanging up top, but they just don't have the numbers for that. Kauri trying to be a little bit cheeky here with Tim's. Arbed's going to TP in. Tim's with a nice sharpshooter back to the low ground. Does avoid Arbed, but the Stampede is incoming. TA2000 even going to show up, and now FBZ. FBZ gets caught with his pants down. The Tim's may make it out, but they got the vision from Q. Disruption will be there in time. Tim's is not making it either. The Shadow Poison stacks will be enough from Q. The very nice rotations here from Aurora. That is the thing with their draft. They can get to you very, very quickly. They can. Teleportation on the NP, Stampede on top. Again, if you don't manage to go for Burst Plays, Arbed. you're likely not finding anything here. Oh, they might find Arbed though, John. And Arbed's been left. Kauri, understanding he cannot help, will just leave the area. But DJ and the crew are looking to see if they can get a Consolation Prize on top. They'll see Kauri. But they've got no way of slowing him down. You already got the bigger target anyway, though. You'll be happy. Yep. It also comes down to timing from Aurora. Like, once you know Stampede's committed, that's your opening on Boom. It does cost them two heroes to open up in that one, but they do manage to slow down the Nature's Prophet and his build up into the Gleipnir for additional control. And again, you're buying so much space out for Ghost. Joins in a little bit in that fight, but already has a Sacred Relic up. Not too far off from the full Radiance now on our Alchemist when the farm really escalates up and activity starts to kick in. FBZ as well. Does have the Midas flying out, can just buy and sell into the dagger and look for some plays with a doom triangle stacks have been cleared out by aurora they do, they do get their network injection right then and the crimson guard from jabs isn't too far off now just a recipe left about 200 gold still we'll see boom try to co go out with the smoke they've got the blink on mac can try to look for someone to burst down stampede Radiant is off scared. cooldown though for jabs just needs a little bit of mana so it might not be the easiest kill to try to find here. They will miss out on, on the kills altogether. Q will leave. Arbed's farming the Ancients on the right side of the map, so he's going to be okay. And they could go through the Twin Gates and see if they can hunt TA2000, and it seems like that's what they're going to try to do. But TA, probably just reading the movement here, it's pretty obvious they'll use the Twin Gates. Uh, TA2000 just goes back to the other side of the map and just goes back to safety. 
He has started working on towards that Aghanim Scepter here on the Meepo to boot, so you're going to have the Mega, Mega Meepo coming out maybe maybe three to four minutes if he's left uncontested. And that's going to be pretty concerning, because we know how hard that Mega Meepo is to deal with. It is. It's going to be a nice early spike for Aura to keep that tempo up under game. Maybe start to look for activity. Again, you're lining up for the Auras already on jabs. I believe the Crimson Guard is already flying out here. Gleipnir not too far as well for Abed, already flying in. So you are set to go. Good timely smoke for Aurora. Just need to see if they can get the FBZ? jump here. He's very far forward here, FBZ. He'll get the Doom off in time. On to Jabs. FBZ actually still surviving, tanking through all the damage output. Q is still trying to get some Shadow Poisons on him. He'll get a disruption off. Still chipping away, but FBZ will be alright. Comes out alive, but he did have to pop Doom on Jabs. Just ensure to Hoof Stomp would come in with a Counter Strike. Double Edge. And that is costly. That's a big cooldown down now for Boom. That means it's going to be, again, a little bit harder maybe to look for this TA2000 kill. And you're going to be free to still Stampede here on Jabs. And you get Space out for Aurora instead. With a mid-tier one gone, they can invade that jungle down bot. They are getting some blockages off already very early on here. Inside of Boom. While well, they're working up, still on Ghost. Radiant's up, going for the BKB rush. Will be active after that point. EJ, not going to be able to get the Snowball, unfortunately. Might be stuck in a really ugly spot here. Looks like it, DJ. I mean, he's got help from Mac. FPZ's around the corner as well. They are going to move in. Rolling Thunder was out from Mac, but Stampede was already committed by Jabs, and of course they are just going to retreat. In fact, in the meantime, Tim's is the one to go down. Q once again, finding a very cheeky pickoff completely on his own. Meanwhile, though, Arbit taking a lot of damage from Mac, trying for the Ooh. TP, but he's... Oh, he's not going to make it. DJ tried to save with the snowball, but it was not enough. As now Jab's moving in once again, looking for some more. Has a hoop stop in one, but he just cannot close the gap, so they will just have to accept the Mac kill. But that is still a very good kill to find. With that Aurora, they'll be happy with their two kills. Yeah. And again, you're seeing some of that global play come out here. Abed joining in on Q mid to bully out Tims. They've got a good forward ward as well to check if any defenders are hanging behind a creep wave. Man should get a nice easy snipe. And the issues for Boom, again, if Stampede is still up on jabs, you just don't have that chase and hold potential here for the side of Boom Esports. And for Aurora, their hit and run is just so damn strong. So much space being given out to TA2000, Ags just about 400 gold away, Mega Meepo is going to be coming out soon. And it doesn't feel like you have the tools just yet on Boom to even consider a burst on the tanky Mega Meepo at this point in the game. You're going to need a lot more farm coming out, you need some well-timed dooms coming in from FBZ. And even then, that's not a guarantee if you don't doom the main Meepo before the Mega Meepo flies on. Stampede is down and Doom is back up if Boom do want to try to hunt. Again, they don't really have the best forward vision here on the map, so they can't really scout out for these kills. No, they cannot. There's the Aghanim Scepter now on TA2000. It really does start to feel like Aurora is having the game to go their way, like... Ghost is still farming freely, but he, he really isn't escalating that as fast as you'd like to see. And at some stage, maybe once the BKB's up, he'll start to move with his team, but... Aurora, it really does start to feel like their game. Like, this is exactly what they love doing. They love a slow-paced game where they can just farm up on all their cores, and that's exactly what they're getting. That they are. And again, the scaling potential here from Aurora is... Pretty well ba well balanced, you know. The end nature's profit can scale quite nicely. You don't have a straightforward counter action here from Boom. And on paper, perhaps breaking trees with Rolling Thunder could be one way, but you are focused on trying to get chain stuns rather than clearing out the bonus damage of the NP. Lots of pressure in FBZ to land these dooms. We'll go for the smoke play out now on the side of Boom Esports. Can we need to find a catch? You'd love to find this Meepo. Keep in mind, again, the Mega Meepo is available. DJ's going to wrap around. Shards will give the vision. They'll jump on one. Stampede has been popped. The stun will connect here from Ghost. TA2000 still surviving. There's your Mega Meepo now, and he's perfectly fine. So they'll turn back onto DJ. And it seems like DJ will die. Meanwhile, Ghost 
will try to run out as Carry just does so much damage on this inch. But he'll be okay to back off. They will only sacrifice DJ. But they do find out the hard way that TA2000 has the eggs available. And he dies. They do have to pop Stampede, but level 2, it's not quite the longest cooldown. Just a minute of a window here for Boom, and they're not ready to re-engage. So they're not going to be able to capitalize off of Stampede being popped. A great Ags reveal coming out here for TA2000. They do manage to hold on to the Doom from FBZ, but again, your kill opportunity just isn't lining up for Boom Esports. And Aurora maintaining that 4k lead early on. Are hitting their stride. About to hit a pipe up on Jabs. Blocking off even more damage coming in here from the side of Boom Esports. I just don't know how you rectify that damage issue. Carry. Carry. Let's get caught. Should be a nice easy kill here for Tim. So a nice little pickup. It could lead to a Roshan. Now they've got 30 seconds without the end. They could consider thinking about Roshan. It won't be the fastest attempt we've ever seen, but... It might just be worth trying. But they they will not. They'll hunt Arbed instead. Down at the bottom lane, Tim's is going, looking for this nature's prof, but Arbed, though, realizing that they are probably on their way, will be able to retreat just fine. And just uh, no opportunities being presented by Aurora. Uh, Kauri has a sacrifice. We've seen Enchantresses do this multiple times. It's not really a meaningful kill is a little bit of a farm accelerant for sure, especially in trying to get Tim's online with some of his own utility with a four staff coming out, but still a ways off from any of those coming in here for the side of Boom. Aurora, again, very, very much happy to just play a very safe and secure game, just scale up, get the free Tormentor for themselves here, just TA2000 and, his, and himself by his lonesome. Engine cleared out all out. The Spurs are here for a Meepo not too far off now. And then you're really just going to have issues in jumping this Meepo. It's going to have a lot of damage to dish back in. The, the, the inhibit, it's going to be really annoying for you to try to keep a chase up. And again, that full pipe for jabs with a Crimson Guard is all done. They're going to try to force this one out on Aurora and Boom. They will. TA2000 is going to be the first one spotted here, I think. Problem is Aurora is smoking right behind him, but they're going to try and make the jump in. TA, he's going to look for the poop. The stun is out. Go to catch him midway rolling thunder out as well but the mega meepo does come in clutch they're going on to fbz now fbz needs some help but dj is there with the drinking buddies it's complete chaos down at the bottom lane and nobody's dead yet they committed the doom onto the meepo but ta2000 is still perfectly fine as tims will be the first one to go down dj being chased here by jabs will also get caught it's boom esports they'll get everyone else out of there but both supports will die. And again, this Ags Meepo, man, it's causing too many problems. And it is, and you just don't have enough damage. Like, there's no output on Ghost to melt through even one of the Meepos on hand. TA2000 is just so smart with his Meepo usage as well, only putting the clones forward, always having the main Meepo far away from fights to just poof it in, and always get the Mega Meepo off to bail himself out of a sticky situation. Roshan to be taken by Aurora, and we'll have a secondary life to hand over onto TA2000 if he so wishes, and does look like he does. Takes the ages for himself. Boom. I'm not sure where this fix for damage is going to have to come in. Like, Ghost is already pretty set up, going for the Assault Curious next. A little bit more minus armor and attack speed to play with can be nice. It's just not, it's really just not burst damage. There's just no way you 100 to 0 one of these cloned Meepos, and... If you don't find the main Meepo and doom him before Mega Meepo comes in, man, it's it's just not going to happen. With the auras backing up here from Jabs, I just, I, I do not see that solution coming in. They have to try to split Aurora apart, get some forward vision to find some stragglers. It's the only way you kind of start to pick Aurora off one by one and hope for hope for a way to equalize this game just a little bit more. Now the, the Radiant Guys, Triangle is going to be infiltrated by Aurora. TA2000 sees DJ, throws the Earthbind out and does catch him and well, poor old DJ just has no help. They're coming in slowly, but can they actually deal with the Meepo? They're gonna try. A nice pushback catches out three of them, but the Mega Meepo is there once again. Here comes FBZ, but the Doom's on cooldown for five seconds. They need more time, but they've got the Meepo under control. He Keep in mind, he does have an Aegis. He will back his way out with the Aegis intact. So nothing is lost here for Aurora. Just get to reset. See the uh, all the big saves coming out from Q at the last second. 
the disseminate with a promulgate just a little bit more hp on an already high hp magnipo the brisk play is just near impossible and that was ta2000 all by himself for at least a good 10 seconds just not enough for boom to even hope to Radiant's find that kill tower is under attack this Mega Meepo is just obnoxious. Mind you, granted, TA2000 isn't really dishing out the damage, as we saw DJ managing to still get away with the drinking buddies once the root did fade off. But the damage is coming in from Abed anyhow, and Kauri at this point. Like, uh, your output, your main DPS is going to be your Nature's Prophet to an extent, your Centaur as well. Again, going for Counter Strike with Double Edge does feel good. And all the Meepo has to do is actually really just take all the attention away. Like you are not going to be dying. He's going for more stats now as well, Mikey. Eye of Scotty coming in for TA2000 next. When the Mega Meepo flies on, I'm, you're, you're really just not killing this guy for, for the next, what, 10, 15 minutes. I don't know if you'll even kill him after that unless you isolate him and leave him for, for last. I don't think so either, John. It does feel like TA2000 is, is feeling a bit too comfortable here on this Meepo in game one. We'll see a smoke out, Aurora, they'll go as three. In fact, they'll, in, they'll connect with a Kauri who's trying to bait in the mid lane. He'll get smoked up to boot. FBZ, realizing they are around, does back off, but TA2000 is still hunting. And instead, he might just start on the, uh, the mid tier two tower. Yeah, like we've seen this over and over again with TA2000. When, when on heroes like this, he just doesn't really care. He knows how to stretch the limit of the hero, and well, with an axe, or we'll rather Aegis up, it's it's going to be pretty hard to kill him twice. I, I think you are literally just stuck waiting for the Aegis to expire now for Boom. And even then, I, I just don't know if you have enough. I mean, we've seen that Mega Meepo fly on so many times. They're, they're trying to chain stun, trying to isolate the main Meepo. It's just not enough. You don't really have the biggest damage output. On Mac Eider, FBZ, Doom is still single target. You have the full Assault Curious and Ghost going for a Blood Torn. The Orchid alone might be helpful enough. Again, you have to identify the main Meepo, which is a little bit challenging in the middle of a firefight. But if you can commit, say, an Orchid or Blood Torn onto the main before making Meepo. FBZ, No Man's Land. Q just chucked out a random Shadow Poison to see if anyone was farming, and he will find somebody very important. FBZ down for 40 seconds now, as they're tipping right back to the Radiant Triangle. TA2000 with the Earthbind not catching anyone yet, but he's still looking. But it seems like he will give up on the chase. But they are just dominating the map now. Like, uh, you, Ghost, he is still finding farm on the Ark, but it's not anywhere near the pace you need to see it at. And quite frankly, I think we both agree the timings have already been missed. Yeah, just hard to imagine this outcome being able to deal with TA2000 at all. I mean, we'll see if it ever comes to the point where he can, but it's it's looking rather impossible. And it is. I I mean, TA2000 is already just working to the last part of the Scotty. And then, it legitimately, I do not know how you kill this Meepo. When Mega Meepo flies on, with four Meepos on hand. It's, it's just way too much stats, like... It's way too efficient. And it, it, it's just too much. I, I'm still surprised. You know, in a good Meepo game, it's it's just... It just does way too much. Um, mind you, if this game does drag beyond once this Meepo is fully slotted up, there are some opportunities, but that does require farm on your supports a little bit more here as well, and maybe something like a refresh or ags up on FBZ to try to get some value from the game. I think that, that's your solutions here. Issue Ghost. is, oh. oh, he's got his team behind him, but Q's looking to set up. We'll start with the enchant on Kauri, stun in from Jabs, drinking buddies from DJ onto Ghost, who will pop the chemical rage now. But the stampede has been committed, so Jabs can disengage with the rest of his side as now Arbet forced him off the BKB before FBZ gets the doom off. Looking to move in for a little bit more while the BKB is still active, but they do back out. So Boom Esports, at the very least, force a BKB and a stampede. But that's that's about it. If it, I, I I don't think it's gonna make enough difference yet. Nah, not just yet. Chemical Rage about to fade for Ghost, so he's not gonna be showing in front line. Aurora straight TPs into the outpost once again. Get some D wards going. 
and just reposition for another engagement if they can find it. Confidence from Aurora. It's for good reason. 11k lead, boom. And they still have this doom up on FBZ. They are going around with a smoke, but you have to be really smart about this one. Ulti 2000. It's going to be the man closest to them, but they do not want to jump the Mepo first. Or do they? Ghost, he's moving in. They want to try. Stuns are out. Can they find the real Meepo? They're moving in once again. TA2000 just taking no damages now. Ghost is completely surrounded. Ghost will pop his BKB and run, but it's not looking good for him. He'll make it out for now. Meanwhile, the Doom committed onto Jabs, but it's all so they can retreat. And Max caught anyway. It's just... It's kind of a half-hearted attempt to at take TA2000's life and yeah, it definitely won't work out if you're not fully committed. No, it certainly does not. I'm surprised they still try to jump TA2000 anyway. Even even these pawns just have way too much HP and when you do manage to get into the fight up against TA2000, but Scotty, you're not regening much at all on Ghost. High ground siege begins. Oh. Jabs will miss out on the start, a nice blink away. FBZ though has not missed out quite yet. He's been in Earthbinded up and just trapped up. He'll try to save FBZ. He'll barely make it out with his BKB intact. But the melee barracks do go down, and Aurora, as we all know, will play it very safely in retreat. Just head back, retake control of the triangle, set their base of operations here, keep that build up. There's no threat from Boom. There really just is no threat right now from the esports. No damage. Control is somewhat there, but it's just not long enough. Really get burst plays onto literally anyone at this point. And Aurora, they can guy try again. They are smoked up here. They're narrowly going to miss out on FBZ, but they have found Mac instead. Well, they haven't found Mac. He does retreat successfully. Radiance top are under nice little smoke break from DJ right while he was standing by his wards. And that does allow Boom to back off, but it, it's not a big loss from Aurora anyhow. Their net worth lead is just growing even while they're trying to find these gank attempts. They are allowing TA2000 and Abed to just farm up freely. You've got the swift blink coming up next for TA2000, so Meepo is just going to be terrifying to actually play into Boom Esports try out with their own smoke. I mean, you, don't, you don't even have a full Orchid up yet in the Ghost. It's just... I don't know, maybe you can kill Q here. We're gonna try. Q that blinks away casually. Stun will land, but here come the TPs into that mid-tier 1 tower, and they've got to run. They have got to run. Glaivnir is out from Arbid. It'll catch two targets. That's gonna be DJ down, and now the Earthbind catching out Ghost. He'll try for the BKB TP play out, and does make it. It just shows how much of the how badly this game's gone for Boom. Like they haven't even found the mid tier one tower. It still gives them the, the TP rotation for Aurora, and yeah, they they just don't have a chance to fight anywhere because it feels like Aurora can be there at any second. That they can be. Boom. Again, I appreciate them trying to take these fights outside of their high ground, but you really have nothing to play with. Like I, I figured maybe you had a full Orchid. On Ghost, but again, even that item still a bit far out here for Alk. And Ghost is already behind the network in comparison to Abed and TU2000. So the entire point of this pickup is just nullified. You don't even have the uh, net worth advantage at this point in the game. 20k lead standing for Aurora. Boom. Just struggling to find anything. And Aurora, very calculated, very smart gameplay. Just pulling around. Even if they present themselves like this on jabs, can you really kill off a centaur with Pipe Crimson guard up, stampede in a few seconds? Likely no. You just can't. Likely no indeed. Aurora. They'll continue just hanging around this bottom lane. Slowly keeping that creep wave pushed in and thinking about going high ground again. Because Roshan is up in 15 seconds, and TA2000 is just going to leave Amiibo casually sitting there as they do find Tim's. So you could just go straight for high ground right now, but they will see Roshan in 5 seconds thanks to TA2000's Meepo. So chances are they're just going to wait for the Roshan instead. 
And with Tim's down, it's basically just guaranteed. If it wasn't already. Yeah, I would say this game is pretty guaranteed for Aurora anyhow. Yeah. So far, it, it's a little bit unfortunate for Boom. Again, that's why I wasn't... A, I'm really not a big fan of the Alchemist. It just doesn't do enough up against what you have here on Aurora. Uh, arguably, no real course left. Again, very smart bands from Aurora. They take the Aegis. They're going to be rotating up. They're already setting up the top here. There goes Jabs. The flank goes to force another BKB usage out of him. Meanwhile, Arben just takes down Mac very, very quickly. Max down 50 seconds without buyback available. And you, your Alchemist doesn't have a BKB ready to go. So, I mean, you can basically go Megas right now. Has been killed. Even if Mac respawns, it's like, who cares? Middle tower is under Certainly not TA2000. Just can't, can just get started in that siege. Nice slow pokes, dropping these side Meepos Radiance down, but really does not matter in the grand scheme of things here for TA2000. Boom. It almost feels like they have to maybe prioritize Radiance Ghost here a little bit earlier. I don't know if they can afford to do that, though. They will smoke Radiance up. One last fight here. I'm gonna try. Radiance this is an elimination game after all, the lower bracket final. Even an Ags now up on, uh, on Q, so you've got even more problems coming in as they do try to jump in, but he just blinks away. And now Ghost stuns himself! Oh boy, it just doesn't get worse than this. ta 2000 is gonna find him. Ghost is down. They call it. I mean, I appreciate that they really just wanted to try and burst out of support, get rid of Q immediately, but Q just reacts too fast and blinks away. And the Ghost just ends up stunning himself for the side of Aurora. Yeah, I mean, again, Aurora managing to flex around her draft very nicely here. Uh, that early pick NP flexing out from Mac and from FBZ. So we'll see if Boom can execute on that for Aurora. It's almost the same timings as game one. In fact, it might go a little bit faster with jabs on hand on the Bristleback. There's a little bit more offense potential coming in. Whereas last time around, or we're more than happy to just stampede and pull back. Now you don't have that bailout tool. So it's kind of all in. If, if Jabs goes forward, they are pretty much committing. Unless uh, Abed can kind of set up for a retreat instead. There is still that option with the Invoker. We'll see. Boom. They need to line all of these up if they want to force a game tree here. It's going to be a smoke on smoke now between these two teams. And Aurora, they are running towards FBZ, but FBZ should be able to get back towards his T1 tower, so... Chances are, first blood will not be drawn unless FBZ decides to go towards the left, but he will not, and he does not break the smoke either of Aurora. So they get towards the, the Dire Triangle. They'll camp on the high ground for now, hoping somebody will show up. In fact, they'll loop around back towards the Banneroon spot. But they'll eventually realize that the side of Boom Esports kind of just camping at the top side. Maybe they can find Tim's though. Tim's hanging about. Can they catch him? Oh, they can. They've definitely got him now. No chance to get away from this one. Who do they give the first blood to? It's going to be Arbit. Very nice. Yep. That late smoke pays off dividends here for Aurora. They managed to get a nice... Real far back ward that you're not going to be clearing out anytime soon, so that should open up some rotations onto Mac. Even some nice cheeky courier snipes as well down the line. Already looking at like a great start for Aurora off the back of that lead smoke. Do you have that mid lane matchup of Abed up against Mac on the Invoker and Prime Beast? And this isn't the most pleasant time for Mac. Like, uh, Invoker does have a lot of long range poke. As an, as the elitist, you're going to go for double rate band here for Abed. Continuously apply that pressure. Onslaughting in isn't as simple here either for Mac as long as you've got the cold snap ready on Abed. So it's not like you can gap close and bully out this invoker as you normally would in most matchups for the Prime Beast. Abed should be able to control this lane quite well actually. And Mac is going to have to try to play smart to just even clear out his own creep wave safely here. Well, top lane. You are seeing Ghost and DJ against Jabs and Q. Jab's trying to be aggressive already here against Ghost, and shards are going to come out from Q eventually, but Ghost will be just fine. 
Though if you are Ghost, you really cannot underestimate how much damage can be pumped out at the level 2 mark from Aurora. That'll be the big power spike. As soon as they hit level 2 on, on, uh, on jabs, and they have now, I kind of expect a play to be made once the shards are back up off cooldown. Maybe you can also wait for Q to have his own level 2 up, but I do believe they can probably get it done if Ghost does overextend a little bit. That they can. I mean, again, you just nullify Warcry as a spell here from Ghost. He's not going to be that durable once you get a couple of do up from jabs. And there's really not too much DJ can do to stop that. He does have Spellbound with Enchant up. Doesn't really have a creep to play with just yet. And the side of Aurora are balancing this lane quite nicely. They've got that level 2 up on Q. So if they do overcommit, you can look for that play. Ghost is not that durable here. Stormhammer's a fairly long cooldown as well when he does toss it out. The one benefit you have here for Boom, of course, is having sticks on hand. You will always have quite a fair bit of burst regen to play with, so it can take a little bit longer for you to at least look for that kill here from Aurora. Absolutely. Nice and quiet across the lanes thus far. Arbit's having a, a very good time in the mid lane thus far as well with the CS. 14 and 2 at the moment. See with that first blood bonus he had as well. In fact, hold that Thorker's bottom lane. There is a jump onto Tim's, and Tim's is copping so much damage. Kauri, he has no more shrapnel charges. He can't get it done. But that will force Tim's to reset with his salve. And in the meantime, top lane, DJ does get jumped. So eventually, Aurora do make it work. Because now Ghost trying to go onto jabs, but this might cost him his own life. And it will, I think. Ghost surely cannot find a way out of this. And he will not. Jabs will find a double kill. They did end up waiting for the level 3 mark to just dive the T1 tower, but why the... Oh, DJ, no! Alright. You, you can't underestimate the timings of Bristle with the task. It's too much. That it is. You are all out of mana on Jabs, at least. So he's going to need a little bit of a reset, some regen to ferry out, I suppose. And he will just add the TP all the way back to get that full reset. Give some room out for Q to soak up. Bottom. Already again, a very strong start here. A lot of damage here onto the Timber. Earthbind was already committed. FBZ though still going down as now the secondary shrapnel does come out and he is gone. You've really got to appreciate the scattershot facet, man. It, it just does so much damage so quickly. Yeah, again, like we were pointing out in Graf, Meepo Sniper is actually a really stable lane. Earthbind into Shrapnel Spam. Heroes will die. Timbersaw has no durability. Up against magic damage early on, you don't have the reach online to really poke back at a sniper to threaten. And you don't really have that kill Mac? opportunity onto TA2000. Well, Mac kind of just onslaughted right into Arbed, but Arbed's just punishing him heavily for this. He'll be alright though, Mac will start moving towards the bottom lane it seems. Just wants the banner in, but TA2000 is trying to cut him off. He will not quite make it. So Mac does manage to pick up the bounty just fine. And it seems like he does... No, he won't. He'll TP top instead, where there is a dive going on. Jabs and Q are going at it once again, but the TP, it was towards the outpost instead, but it won't matter anyway. He'll get there in time. Q's being chased. Jabs is alright, but Q will be the one to drop. So the rotation from Mac does pay off in terms of saving his allies and finding a support pick off. It'll be all worth it. And it is... We get some early activity out now on our Primal Beast. Unfortunately, it's just giving so much room out to Abed mid. Double Wraith Bands up, Power Treads coming in, right clicks of the Invokers getting oh, crazy. Again, this matchup is not great. FBZ's having a really rough time. He'll chain away, but they can still get some damage off here onto FBZ. In fact, Q's going to show up as well with the shards, but FBZ's still running. They need some vision. He'll salve up TA2000 trying to get there, but won't quite. Carry in the meantime can at least cancel the salve. FBZ still being chased down by Kauri. Not something you see every day, but it might work out for Kauri if he's able to get there, but not quite. Instead, they'll go after Tims, who's shown up on the line, but will not be able to help at all. He does die. I mean, you don't have the TP on Mac to help that one on that bot dive. It does take a lot of commitment from Aurora, but you're still making this lane hellish for F F FBZ and Tims. Really, just no pressure onto TA2000 in this game once again. Shove onto that bot tier 1. FBZ is still stuck at level 3 on the Termusaw. And Kauri now at level 4.5. 
Not the best feeling in the world right now for Boom. 6-1 to start. Aurora, again, playing a very clean game. They've got Mac around this time. They don't. They can find the angle. It's just a plus 5 sniper you're picking off here. Like, it's not a bad kill. Like, Mac will definitely take it. The thing is, though, you're rotating this mid-primal beast over and over again for support kills. It's, it's not going to feel great while Arbed's just freely farming and getting all this, this extra XP for nothing. Like, there's just no contest for it. It's, it's a really big trade-off for Boom to find, but again, it's not like Mac can really do anything mid anyhow, right? Like this, this Invoker, again, can just cut off the angles of a Prime Beast quite nicely. You can't just Onslaught and Gap Close onto the Invoker. It, it's just not an easy lane for the Prime Beast whatsoever. So you do have to play the map a little bit more. You have to kind of concede that Abed will just Mac. do what he wants, although... Mac's in big trouble. TA2000 starting off with the Earthbind. He does have Onslaught available, but he's completely out of mana now. And that's the kind of rotation that matters more from the mid lane. I mean, Arbit, he'll find the mid laner Radiant's on the opposite team, top. and immediately they'll go through the Twin Gates looking for Ghost up at that top lane. And Ghost, he's hanging around. He knows something is a little bit wrong here. He'll try to get away, Radiant's but Arbit's going to spot him. Ghost will not go back towards the fountain, and that will mean his life will be taken. There's no two ways about that. He is dead. Or again, <laughs> applying that pressure quite nicely, hitting your early power spikes very quickly after a strong laning phase. Boom. Just looking a little bit lost. Again, Mac has no lane to play with, so he has to look for these pickups in the side. They're only finding support pickups. FBZ is still trying to work into level six. Doesn't have the double chalk from Tret to really burst him down just yet. And Aurora, um, they've just got these early levels to play with. Already looking to group up mid. Only DJ right now to kind of hold this aggression off. Kauri and Q, for an angle in, but... Mid lane, they're gonna find DJ. The overprotective Wisps, I mean, they'll, they'll kick... In fact, not even, he had Spellbound as well. Just the Wisps themselves, not enough as... Well, Mac gonna Onslaught through. Mac? Okay, he's all right. They don't have the spells here on Arbet to throw out. Just clear out the creep wave the best he can. Arbet will still get started on the T1 mid tower, but it's only going to be a bit of chip damage. Yeah. Just a little poke, but again, just trying to funnel Boom's resources into defending this crucial objective. It, this is giving space for FBZ down bot. He is clearing out the jungle, slowly pushing in that bot. Already took the tier one at the very least to some objectives. Uh, being taken here by the side of Boom, but it does feel like Aurora is still in a very happy spot. Smoke out for Boom Esports now. DJ and Mac looking for a flank. Jabs might not be the easiest target, but it's the one that will present itself here. Jabs. Certainly not a very easy target, that's for sure. They're going to jump. Onslaught. It doesn't connect, but they'll get the pulverize. Jabs. Still okay. Here come the TPs. This could be a big problem here for the side of the Dire as Jabs has survived he'll make it out there's no death for the bristle but there is death for mac he is gone and ghost ghost is not looking very safe john ghost is looking a bit like a ghost right now but he's okay shards were not available for q to throw out so he does manage to make it out but another two for nothing trade and a bit of wishful thinking john try to jump the bristle back of all heroes yeah again it's the only target they could find for that smoke not an easy target to go for. Double bracers up on jabs and even the follow down chase with the uh, snot rocket means you're actually not able to even utilize your trample that well here for Mac to look for that kill. Uh, with a tier one still standing as a TP point aura just responds in force. And boom are just missing the mark. There's that defusal up once again for TA2000 into the same itemization into the ags we're seeing here for our Miko. Kauri off the back falls this aggression towards him. He's already level 7 on our sniper. And everything's just lining up. They've still, they haven't managed to stack the triangle as much around on Aurora, but there is still some good stacks on Scout and Mac again. Yeah, really copying it here, Mac. He is just getting chipped away at, and he is fine, just barely. Uh, Snowball does not connect, which will mean Mac will barely survive. Now that they will try it for the chase onto Q. Q playing a lot of time here for his side though. As 
eventually they will catch him with the pulverize and even the god strength being popped just to ensure they can get this kill though q now will go into the snowball even more time being bought still going but we'll die eventually it's just too much time for boom takes them assault what 20 seconds to kind of get that kill and they lose their tower up top and the map's just shrinking like yes you are finding some punishment on boom but it's not nearly enough to really get this ball rolling just yet there is a lot of room coming out for fbz at very least going into the kaya now on our timber saw there's going to be some damage coming out when he can commit in and they have their own small stacks to clear out here in the triangle some farm coming out for fbz and for mac still aurora are looking like they're they're in a very happy position they've got the full witchblade coming out for abed into the dragon lance they're trying to maintain rune coverage here as well although the regen will be taken away but jabs is starting to feel comfy enough to just run up I and mean, you can't kill this bristle back at all well, at the very least, DJ does make it out. Mac, just hiding in the tree line, waiting very patiently for an opportunity to jump. Will not come, though. In Aurora, they will happily dissipate, come back another day. Keep in mind, John, the one person we haven't really talked about at all is TA2000. He's just free farming this whole time. It's, a, it's pretty much a, a replica of what we saw in Game 1. Yep. He's going to have the Ags up in a few minutes. Same timing, and I don't see the answers once the Ags is there. It's not straightforward. I think, again, you try for burst play. It's a lot better in trying to burst that one clone Miko out now. Tims, he's going to get bursted. He sure will. Tims will go down Arbet. I mean, Arbet being ultra annoying with this, uh, with this Wex build-up just... Especially for Mac, every time that EMP does connect, he literally loses all his mana. Like, he does buy a soul ring, so he can at least have a little bit to try and get his way out, but it's just so, so ugly to have to play against an invoker as Primal Beast. Yeah. It's no fun at all for Mac. Again, even Lane, Abed was just getting everything he'd want. Just, there's just no threat from Primal Beast. Until a BKB flies on for Mac, which is still a ways off here for him to find a farm. It's not been prioritized whatsoever. It's been FBZ and Ghost getting all of this safe farm on the side of Radiant's Boom's part. They are keeping up at the very least despite all these losses, right? Like, you're within 400 gold for Ghost, within 600 or so gold for FBZ to the top networks here. So you are keeping that farm distribution nice and smooth. It's only been Max sacrificed into the wind as he is barely attack. above our support sniper at the moment. Just the state of the game for Boom. 3k lead standing for Aurora. Constantly playing across the river. Just ensuring Boom is not being the comfiest in trying to farm up here. Heck, they even have a forward board to watch that triangle. Not going to make a play off the back of it. And more than satisfied in just getting this build up on TA2000 right now. Heck, even Jabs had room to clear out stacks. So he is also about 500 gold away from his own Ags timing. Bristleback plus Meepo Ags timing lining up together. That is... Ah, uh, that's pretty terrifying for Boom. Like Aurora are just going to be able to run you down with really no concern once these double Ags are up. Lane, they have moved in. DJ is gone. Boom Esports again, just trying to retreat without losing any more bodies. They'll just accept DJ's life being lost. Pretty surgical game once again. I mean, TA2000 now just 600 gold away from having that final bit of point booster to, to get the Ags up. Uh, I believe we have Jab's Ags up already as well. Going straight into the uh -oh. shard. So again, double Ags timing. The hairball coming in. All the slows, the additional goose stacks coming out with the snot rocket. Minus armor. It's not like you have a Sven shard up just yet. It's not something you tend to rush on the core Sven. You have a lot of issues here on the side of Boom. We were talking about this in Drafter Solutions. Have to be BKBs, have to be an eggs on Mac for a source of break. And it's all a pipe dream. This Primal Beast was the one sacrificed for FBZ and goes to get that build up. And uh, FBZ at very least is close to finishing up his mech with a full Kaya on top. 
lane. Group up is there. Boom. I do not believe want to fight. Arbit almost finding a ghost TPing from the mid lane, but didn't quite have the vision to stop the TP. Aurora, I mean, they are still smoked up. They're having a hunt around, and the scan is going to catch Mac at the top side of the map. So TA2000 just going right in for the Primal Beast. Should be able to catch him with an Earthbind, and does. Here comes the cavalry. And that's your, your mid Primal Beast getting absolutely deleted. Yep. Just no game for Mac. And I like target prioritization on Aurora. They know this Primal Beast actually has to come online quick for Boom to have some impact here. It's just not there. Roche opens up for Aurora. I'm gonna rush right in. They've got the Ags up in TA2000. They've got the Fusal Blade up. Not the quickest Ags in the world, but the Snock Rocket will make that a lot quicker, of course. And the side of Boom can't fight. Like, they just have to sit back, farm. FEZ into Guardian Greaves. We have not seen any activity out from this number saw, by the way. But the Guardian Greaves at least provides some brevity, some flash healing, and a little bit of durability. Up front, I just... I just don't know if it's worth that investment. If it's worth sacking your mid for your Timber Saw to get Guardian Greaves timing up with Akaya when your Primal Beast will not even end up with his BKB for at least, what, five, maybe ten minutes if he keeps dying on the longer end. Still trying to buy their time. A ghost working towards a, BK, a, B, a blink into a BKB. Here comes Aurora though. Mac gets the onslaught away, but the Earthbinds will come in very, very soon from TA2000. Ghost is spotted. TA2000 running right towards him, but doesn't have a way to break the gap. Disperser is not quite up yet. The way Boom's playing this, it really does feel like they're just waiting for the inevitable. Yep. There's your blink up. Mid T2 Tower now going to be under siege by Aurora. And there will be another three man smoke here from Aurora as they do just start to split looking for kills up at that top lane while TA2000 takes care of the mid T2 Tower. And it seems like it's probably going to be poor old DJ that gets caught. Unless they find Mac instead. Oh, and they do. Not Mac again. He's got no onslaught for five seconds either. Q's just waiting for him to pop it so he can use Snowball. Doesn't get it off that time around. Mac trying for the TP play out. Can they get the vision? They cannot. Not quite in time. So Mac, he'll barely make it. He will out him. by some time. Tims? And I thought Tims was hunting TA2000, but I was wrong. Here comes Ghost to try and help out. Can TA2000 survive this? He'll get the Mega Meepo off in time. TA dropping very, very low. Still has the Aegis though. In they come. Q is here. Tims is gone by the looks of it. Oh. Meanwhile, FBZ jumping on the Mega Meepo, trying to take him down, and TA2000 is gone. But they also lose Ghost. He's now Jabs. Will be taken out by Boom. But they've still got an Arbit problem here. FBZ. Oh, the Sunstrike. It's not going to land. Meanwhile, Mac now looking for the Invoker. Maybe they've got Arbit to boot. And it seems like they do. An ultra kill for FBZ. They're looking for a Rampage here. Kauri's on the run. Max on the chase. They've got the enchant. They should have carried a boot. And the chakram will fly in, but oh. Mac will secure the kill himself. Ah, oh. can't just steal that away from FBZ. The CEO is not no. gonna be too happy. Although, oh, Q messed up. Oh, whoopsie daisies. Looking for a quick D ward, but it is gonna cost him his life as he does snowball back towards FBZ. Eventually, will die. FBZ takes another. He blinked off. Didn't manage to get the Walrus Punch off as FBZ just walked right outside of uh, melee attack or block attack range. And he gets stuck in the middle of three heroes. Rather unfortunate for Q if he managed to clean up FBZ. Might have been a little bit better to swallow the medicine here on Aurora. But now the game evens out. Apparently, the investment to allow FBZ to get Guardian Greaves was well worthwhile. I had my doubts about allowing FBZ to just play passively and let Mac cop all of it. 
it does pan out. He's got the damage. They force out the Mega Meepo on the first life of PA2000. No bailing save on the secondary life. Now you hit the BKB timing up for Mac. You actually have a game to play now for Boom Esports. They've got the damage in comparison to game one. They've got ways of kiting around this Meepo if they can get their positioning right. They've got Mac who will not die in just one onslaught of spells with a full BKB up. And there's some opportunities here. Mind you, or can still scale, of course. Like, there is still a lot of room to grow on Abed. You've got a BKB coming out for jabs. So, that same team fight might not be able to repeat itself, but they will smoke and try to find more. They are going to find jabs Oops. immediately. That's a big pickoff here from FBZ. Q also getting caught out. Boom. Showing signs of life now. As they're going to find another target. Oh, Q. No, he'll get the blink away. But Tim's finds him. Tim's will find him. FBZ claiming another life. And Boom Esports, I mean, they were quiet for most of this game, but suddenly one big team fight. And Boom are feeling confident. They are. Once they hit multiple BKBs here, it becomes a little bit harder for Aurora to, again, play in that way that they'd want to do so. The threat from the Meepo kind of dissipates a little bit. The right click damage of TA2000 isn't really there yet. And Jabs is himself a sitting duck without, without his own BKB to come into play. So you have to kind of just sit back, reset a little bit on the side of Aurora. Got the full Dispertor up at the release for TA2000. So a little bit more control and save here for the Meepo to kind of go in and out. And Aurora will actually go for their own smoke play now. See if they can find anyone. They know some of those, the BKB of Mac at least was committed. FBZ. FBZ. This will be a big target now. He's on a big kill streak. FBZ backing off, and now he's got his own BKB up on this Timbersaw. So it turns out the, the Timber pick against this Meepo is certainly doing some good work. See if they can keep it up, though. Like, this is the stage where if you're, if you're kind of having a good time, you, you don't want to see Boom slow down too much. I mean, mind you, they do almost have the BKB up on Ghost, and I think that's exactly what they're waiting for, to try and get aggressive once again. So giving Aurora the time to try and play catch up, it, it just never seems like a smart idea. We've just seen it too many times. Yeah. Again, you, you do have, like you mentioned, BKB. Another big one is Ags on Mac. Break on Meepo and Break on Bristle is actually pretty important here. So, I, I don't mind that weight as long as they're not sacrificing anything in that wait time. They are working the map efficiently enough. They have managed to shove Aurora further back. On the map, and they are actually going around with the smoke right now. BKB is set to be delivered here for Ghost, but for your will have to. Okay, it makes it right in time before he goes through the gate. So now BKB on the Sven to jump in. Do jump in. Oh, they got TA2000. He's looking like he's in pretty big danger. Already half HP through the Mega Meepo. TA is gone again. No helping coming either from Aurora. They all just get out. And boom. I mean, they're looking like they might force us to a game three. Things are looking good. That they are. Again, for the side of Aurora, they need their own BKBs to be up on jabs, and they need a little bit more from Abed for him to really be a threat with just the right clicks and control that he can provide on the Invoker. But Boom are not resting. They know they've got security here, and they still have the BKB unpopped on Ghost. They're making good progress on Mac with his buildup, although he does switch out of the Ags just straight into a Shivas. And probably feeling like they can just burst down jabs without a break right now. Still, Ghost is pretty far forward here. BKB popped and trying to run away. Shards are going to lock him in though. This is a nice opportunity for Aurora to try and deal with Ghost, but the four staff is there. Sunstrike not going to quite land. Ghost does get the blink away, but they are still chasing him down. Hairball will land from jabs. Ghost with the TP play out, and he actually makes it. They don't go for the TP cancel. I don't believe they even saw him. And with that, I mean, Boom. They get away with, with practically everyone. A little bit hairy from Boom. Very heads up for staff coming in there from DJ. The shove ghost out of the shards. Just basically saved the day. So that was a very risky spot to be forcing in from ghost. Does cost him his BKB charge. You're more than happy to, again, get that done while everyone else is farming up. FBZ. 
already at the Veil of Discord. So, making his own progress onto a Shiva. We will get double Shivas here for the side of Gloom, but it's not too bad as both these heroes tend to might, might end up playing in different parts of the team fight anyhow. So, this ensures the team get full coverage on front and back lines, at least uh, as long as they're not playing in the same central position uh, the double shiva can be quite quite fine and boom now have the 2k lead up themselves taking a look at the graph you can see how that nosedive just a little bit for aurora 52 percent win probability now coming out for boom and i will say this the meepo in this game will not be able to out damage the sven right like that is the one thing like last time around the alchemist just not a naturally high damage hero it's a high farm hero that gets advantage over Enemies by items. Sven, not quite the case. Just always strong, even scaling into the late game. The smoke comes out from Boom. We can find an angle out here. A bit. Four staff away. Comes jabs. BKP has already been committed. He's just trying to burst down Tim's, but Tim's does get four staffed out by DJ. Still does go down to jabs from the high ground as he tries to TP, oh. but the stun! Ghost makes it in time! Jabs trading his life for a lion support. I do not believe Jabs will be very happy about that. And it's going to open up the top T2 tower. Well, nice quick siege coming out from the side of Boom. And the side of Aurora. And this Meepo isn't fully set. Right? The Scotty's not quite up for T2 towers. And can't really fully commit his body forward. He's seen the burst damage even in Mega Meepo. It is on hand. For the side of Boom. We'll have to just, again, keep playing it safe. Abed working onto his own BKB now, switching out from the Parasma. In fact, switches back to the Parasma, recognizing that he can probably play further back with his Hurricane Pike and try to just give some additional damage. That Aura is starting to lack now up against the tanky lineup of Boom. Boom, for their part, have Roshan open for themselves. Aegis and Banner is set to go their way. No contest out from Aurora. And... For Aurora's part, again, it just feels like uh, this this Meepo this time is playing into way too much burst. Meepo is not a great BKB carrier whatsoever, so you're likely in that just having no real solution from that. You kind of have to try to rely on Q to bail you out, perhaps with a blink snowball if that full commitment's there. Get some invulnerability for yourself for a moment, and. Look for angles back in. But Boom are just set to scale up even more. We're getting the Daedalus coming out for Ghost. Next is opting for, again, more of that physical burst on hand. We've got FBZ still set to finish it, finish up his Shivas. A little bit of a slower process. Just a recipe left here for Mac on his own Shivas into the Ags. And they'll just keep that siege going. Ages up on Ghost. There's not too much to be scared of. And get started on... More tier 2 towers down, Bont, leaving only the mid left, and Boom are actually smoking while they're pushing out here. They're trying to hunt in the mid lane, see if they can find themselves a bit of a straggler pick, but nobody's around that area. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. The smoke does not amount to much, but Aurora certainly feeling. Kind of scared on the map at the moment. Just completely avoiding any any boom heroes. Yeah, Ghost is going to have a Daedalus up very so soon at this rate. How are you spotted by the courier? Uh oh. Ghost? Ghost? Kind of in the middle of nowhere right now. Uh, Ghost is down for the first life. Wait, what? DJ's gonna try and help out. Here comes Mac. Ghost is still okay. Locking him down with the Earthbind. They're still not too confident to try and move in, but here oh comes Q with a big Lord. Walrus Punch and Ghost is gone. Now Mac also in trouble. I mean, it's, obviously they want the fight now because Ghost is just dead without buyback. So Mac is just guaranteed to die here on the Primal Beast. FBZ forced the BKB and chain away. 
And that's the kind of mistake you couldn't afford to make if you were Boom Esports. If you cannot. Ghost holds on to his BKB even while he's rooted up. Quick and easy blink punch Sunstrike comes in. And Boom are suddenly on the back foot. And like, yes, they catch out power. It takes a long time to kill off that sniper up top. And it just provides all these opportunities out for Aurora onto the mid. Taking that tier 2 tower out. First tier 2 of Boom to fall. High ground not quite lining up for Aurora yet, but they do equalize the game. Now you have to be cautious about that in Boom. You cannot afford to bleed out this way. As Aurora can look for those holds and punch right through them. There's the Scotty up now for tier 2000. Much more stance to play with now. On our Meepo, the Mega Meepo going to feel amazing when you do pop into that form. Going into the Butterfly next, just lacking the Talisman now. You have your Shivas up on FBZ, so the double Shivas is on hand for Mac and FBZ. Mac still trying to look for his Ags for that break option. 18 to 15. Game has equalized, but it does feel like giving tempo back to Aurora uh, makes your game that much harder on the side of Boom. And they, again, they still have a lot of tools to play with, but you can't afford to make mistakes like that. You, you just can't up against Aurora. You're reaching a point where Q will have the kickback up with the Ags on our Tusk. He basically has the gold for it now, so Ags kick is going to be there, and it just gets a little bit scary for Boom. If they're, if they're tossed all around, all over the place, isolated away, it becomes that much easier for Aurora to actually take you apart one by one as we saw on that mid fight here we go ta 2000 jumped again this will be a big pickup they can get a ta oh that's a big stun oh. that's a big stun ghost will just shred him a new one in 70 seconds is the cooldown on respawn here for ghost oh, excuse me for uh, for ta 2000 ghost is perfectly fine of course he's still alive <laughs> It's going to be a three-man smoke. They're going to try oh. and burst him down. Kickback is there. Ghost, he gets his BKB off this time, but he's dropping very low on HP, and he is dead. Can someone explain to me why Boom Esports continue to split every time they have an advantage? DJ down now as well. Why are we splitting? Kickback. Mac is now in trouble. Q, may go down, but he still looks okay. Is FBZ now being targeted? Gets his BKB off, still trying to salvage this fight, but he's dead. Sunstrike, ah. not going to catch anyone. Well, why are they not backing up Ghost? I don't understand why they're getting so greedy to farm the whole map. I wish I understood why as well. Um, you can get 70 punished seconds again. without Meepo, and they went to farm. Yeah, I don't know. They get overconfident. They probably didn't see Q with Ags, to be fair. Like, he did pick that up in okay. Fog. So they probably didn't expect the kickback to be ready on Q. But you have to expect that from Aurora, right? Like, this is this is Q we're talking about. This is a guy who can always find farm. And the Tusk kick just puts Ghost in a position of misery. 4k lead comes out for Aurora as Boom Esports. A drop in the ball a little bit once more. I mean, even you said it, right? When TA2000 died, you were like, oh, that's just Ghost dead again. You're just so used to it. <laughs> from from these qualifiers, that's exactly what you'd expect. A Pavlovian response from Michael Phoenix. It does happen. Yeah. Don't fault you for that. But 21 to 16, 5k lead for Aurora. Boom. Uh, need to get need to get all of their stuff sorted. They will smoke. They'll try to go on the hunt once more. They have found themselves a nice target of jabs. Mac popping the BKB instead of uh, just jumping in and getting the job done, but it doesn't matter. Maybe just a, a quick misclick here from Mac. But they've got jabs down now for 75 seconds. Another opening, assuming they don't leave Ghost alone. Uh, Alright, well, do you reckon they do? Look, look at this position. <laughs> 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 uh, Tim's is hugging him now. Tim's is like, no, no, yo, I'm yeah, not leaving you alone anymore. No more. It's just, it's just Tim's and DJ. His cores are, well, they're kind of close we now. Well, they left FPC alone this time, John. <laughs> FPC's in trouble now. FPC. I mean, I don't understand uh, how this keeps happening. Oh, Shards Lord. out, Ghost. He'll get four staff away. Max gonna come in.
Tibbs? Oh, oh, oh it flies oh, right oh, over him. It's oh, all right. Oh. You know how okay. I was saying earlier that Boom had the opportunity to make <laughs> Gary have a decent day? Well, I, have a, I have a funny feeling Gary's not having a good day. No, 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 no. Boom has an opportunity to give Harry, Gary a heart attack at a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what the game what plan doing? is right now. And make carry on as stressed as possible. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Lord. Oh, my God. oh goodness. Boom. Every 4v5 and they're just not sticking as 5. Now, what can you do? They want to play with handicaps for a little bit on Boom. They've got the Daedalus up on Ghost. Oh, you? God. Uh oh. Yeah, oh, I mean, God. they do, John. Problem is they don't have buyback on Ghost. <laughs> Ghost in trouble. Jabs will chase him down. Don't tell me. This is how we're going to see Arax go oh, down. It's done. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, Ghost God. is down for 85 seconds. Mac in trouble. Kick back again. Q is unrelentless with these kicks. And I'll just say it. I mean, if it wasn't obvious, Q is definitely the best pos for an SEA right now. Probably has been for the last year or two. As you can see by these plays. And As for Boom Jonathan. I'm going to sound a bit harsh. This is deserved. This is deserved. I, I don't understand how they split up that many times. That, like, I, I, don't, I think Moosh is probably going to have a lot of words to say. Here we go. DJ's in trouble. DJ's down. They do at least find Q though, but Q is going to buy back. Now Mac's in trouble. Mac, he is dead. TA2000, he's dropping lower. FBZ trying to get the job done, but they do have the Mega Meeper. In fact, it was the dig. Never mind the Mega Meeper. Here comes the Mega. No FBZ done. Game's over. The game is literally over. Oh, Lord. How does that happen? Uh, you know what it is, and I hate to uh, I hate to bring these memories back for Gary Onko. This is a good boom roster. They they have individual skill. They have individual play.